Hi everyone, Kevin here. I will be your guide for this video. If you're interested in manufacturing, then building fixtures is a must-have skill. Parts need to be held accurately in place for a variety of reasons. In this case, we are looking at a weld fixture. Let's dive right in. The fixture we are making is very close to the raw material size you see here. You can cut the raw material down any way that's convenient for you. The important detail is to choose a raw material that is as close to your final desired shape as possible. This prevents excess machine time. When you make your cut, be sure to leave a little extra material. Once you have cut your raw material, accuracy is very important from this point on. Make sure that your vise is properly trammed. Here's a link to a video on tramming your vise. Dial indicators are a machinist's best friend, and in order to make good fixtures, you'll need to get very well acquainted with these. Once the part is clamped in the vise, you need to choose the correct cutting tool. I choose a face mill for this roughing pass. Next we run a finish pass with the Tormox Superfly Cutter. This makes for a very fine finish. Machining every face on the block is a must. The shape of the raw stock is often wavy and causes issues with accuracy. It's important to chamfer any sharp edges. Your hands will thank you. And it also prevents the corners of the block from getting dinged up, which could cause the block to be slanted on the table. A 90 degree chamfer tool was my weapon of choice, but a file will also get the job done. Now is a good time to QC our work. It's good to develop a habit of checking each step as you go. It will save you time and money to catch issues and dumb mistakes earlier rather than later. We are lucky enough to have a surface plate that was donated to us by a friend. If you don't have one, your next best option is probably the surface of your milling table. Use a dial indicator and some calipers to make sure you're still on target before going any further. How you inspect your part is highly dependent on the tolerances you're trying to achieve. Now we are about to reach the point of no return. Before drilling any of the holes, it's important to mark the origin of the part. I use this one corner of the block as a reference for all the hole patterns, which prevents the dimensions from drifting too far. There are many ways to find the zero point of your stock, and the edge finder is the tool I'm using here. Here's a link on how to use an edge finder. Before starting any operations, I like to lay out all the tools for the job in order to reduce any distractions or the need for thinking about which step is coming next. I find this makes the work flow more smoothly. This part is fairly simple overall. Two sides of the block have a bolt pattern for receiving the precision shoulder bolts. First, I pre-drill each hole with a number seven drill. Then machine a 5 16 counter bore for the shoulders and finally tap the holes to a quarter 20 thread. Then the block gets rotated 90 degrees for each of the two through holes. Roughing out these larger holes is best done with a drill bit that is slightly undersized. I use a boring bar to finalize the whole dimension. A reamer is a more reliable tool for achieving the same thing, but you will need a separate reamer for every hole size, which can get expensive. Here is a link to a video on how to use a boring bar. The holes are checked with a bore gauge and a micrometer. Here is a link to a video on that technique. 
I make one last adjustment to the boring bar and the hole is brought to final size. That's it for the fixture blocks. It's time to assemble them in the correct locations. In high production settings, it's common to see purpose-built fixtures for making one part over and over again. An alternative to that is modular fixturing systems that allow you to set up and use a fixture accurately, and then tear down the setup, reusing common parts for the next job. This can save money and time for prototyping and custom work. Our fixture table was designed and built by us using our CNC routers. If this tool is something you need in your shop, we have free prints and 3D models which can be downloaded from our website. Click here for the link. The table was designed to work with the number 10 series extrusions provided by 8020 Inc. You can download 3D models of the extrusions and other related parts from 3D Content Central or directly from 8020 Inc. A link is in the description. This fixture system was designed with a unique feature. That feature is a fastening support tray. It holds quarter 20 jam nuts in line with the holes under each table plate. This allows you to install the shoulder bolts with one hand while attaching fixture components. Here is where the nut trays attach. You can position those nut trays in any location you need. Shoulder bolts are used for accurate positioning. The nut trays have clearance holes to allow longer bolts to pass through. This angle bracket was drilled out to fit the shoulder bolts and attaches easily. The extrusions allow us to position plates in any orientation we may need. In this case, I am mounting the plate at 90 degrees to the table. The extrusions can be tapped on the ends as well for attaching in the vertical position. Sometimes the bolts will bottom out in the T-slots of the extrusion and may need to be cut down. Or in my case, I just added some washers. Here's the table being used to weld together the front swing arms for the Centurial Solo. If you haven't seen the swing arms construction video yet for our new supercar, here is a link to that. We also post videos on simple DIY metalworking projects you might be interested in, so check out our channel for those. If you want to stay up to date on the new sports car project, or learn more about manufacturing, make sure to subscribe. If you want more information, you can visit us at our website, centurialinc.com. Link is in the description below. All of this work is being done by Matt and I, and it's a ton of work. So if you want to help keep this content coming, you can make a donation through YouTube or on our website. Till next time, thanks for watching.